good afternoon. Um, this is Wednesday, my, and on our schedule here, I was, I was waiting for y'all yesterday, so uh, been waiting a long time for you all. But uh, staff and team, we're excited. Thursday night football, uh, kicking off the second part of our season here in, in Waco versus an undefeated number 12 ranked Baylor team. And uh, Coach Rule and the staff, uh, they're, to be, they're to be commended. They've done an excellent job. Year three, and uh, to go where they were when they got the, when they took over the program to where they're at now, I think it's incredible. Um, they're playing with a lot of confidence, and they're playing at a high level. I think it all starts for them with uh, quarterback Charlie Brewer, a tough winner. Um, I think the team really plays to his personality and uh, hurts you with his legs and his arms. Um, I've known him for a long time uh, and tracked him really since he was since he was young, going back to. Uh, probably in elementary school, but uh, uh, brother played for us at Texas Tech, uh, Michael, um, one of my favorite families I've ever had the opportunity to recruit. Um, really bought into what we were doing at Texas Tech. He was our first commit. He was my first commitment there as the offense coordinator um, and really uh, started a, a special class. I think we had four or five NFL players just on the offensive side in that recruiting class. So uh, special family to me. I'll pull for him except in this game on Thursday night. So. Uh, They've got great team speed at the skill positions. Um, play three running backs. I think all three of them are threats. Um, maybe the most speed at wide out in our conference. Um, they, they're really playing at a high level. Uh, large number of explosive plays. They're ranked in the top 25 in numerous categories uh, offensively. Uh, they've, got one, they've got the ability to rush the football. They're rushing for over 200 yards. And they're one of the top passing teams in the country. So just a well-rounded offense. And, and they're playing at a high level. Uh, defensively, a veteran group. I think they start seven seniors, uh, three juniors, so ten upperclassmen with the 11 starters. Uh, they're playing really hard, creating negative plays. Last three games, uh, 13 sacks, 29 tackles for loss in the last three games. Uh, forcing takeaways, I think they're 16th in the country in turnover margin. Uh, completely changed their schematics uh, since last season uh, and really playing uh, at a high level over there. Special teams-wise, they blocked eight kicks in their last 11 games, uh, number 22 nationally in both their kickoff team and their punt return unit. Uh, I think their returners are, are, are very capable. Uh, they've had some big returns already. And again, they have a lot of speed, a lot of team speed. That sticks out uh, to you when you watch them on special teams. Uh, tremendous challenge, um, but our guys are looking forward to it. You know, they grow up watching college football on Thursday night. I believe we're the only game on. And so, uh, Tremendous challenge, but a great opportunity. So with that, I'll, I'll take questions. Neil, you faced a lot of running quarterbacks mm -hmm. recently, but is Brewer a different type running quarterback than the others, or similar to those? Well, it, he's different in the fact they don't call just a bunch of run plays for him. He's a, he's a guy that uh, scrambles and, and takes advantage of broken plays. Uh, different from Hertz and Erlinger, or Ellinger um, and Purdy, because those teams call running plays for their quarterbacks. Um, Baylor may do it here and there. But most of the time when he runs the football, it's broken plays. He does a great job extending them. With Brewer, he's mm -hmm. been around and played a lot for them, kind of been on those teams that sort of took their lumps. With, with them at 8-0 and, oh and kind of rolling like they have, have you seen him kind of take the leap this year? And maybe how has he improved? Well, I think he's he's a kid that's that's really probably had some pressure on him since he started playing. You know, he was uh, at Lake Travis, just, an, just another quarterback in that long line they've had there at Lake Travis. and. Um, was really successful there. You know, not only his brother was a, was a really good t quarterback uh, at Virginia Tech, but his dad was a really good quarterback at Texas. So it's kind of family lineage. He uh, he went in and started playing as a true freshman um, and, and took some lumps during that early, in that, uh, I think, in the season they won one game. Um, then you could see him progress. Uh, he missed some time last year, and they were a completely different team when he didn't play. Um, but you can see him getting better, and this year he's played at a really high level. And he's played at a high level in some of their biggest games. I thought I thought he was really good, especially in the second half last week versus Oklahoma State, or two weeks ago, whatever that was. I know you're deep into Baylor, but did anything catch you off guard last week in the Big 12? Game? You know what? And this this is this is so Saturday was a was a Monday technically for us. So we were here all day. I didn't, I watched very little football. I saw the end of the Texas TCU game. Um, I saw the score of the, we were in a special teams meeting. Uh, somebody told me the score of the uh, Kansas State of home game, so I knew the outcome. Um, and then I saw the end of the Texas Tech game on uh, Texas Tech and Kansas game. Um, nothing, nothing, this, this is a league 
uh, from top to bottom. I think that it's, it's really good. I've known that for a long time. I think that depending on what Saturday you play or Thursday you play, I think anybody's capable of beating anybody. And, and so college football, man, you're dealing with 17 to 23-year-olds. If y'all get that figured out, let me know. Do your injury situation anything change since we talked to you last week? Nah, I, I think uh, Qualls, uh, questionable, it may be even doubtful, um, and nothing, nobody, anybody in particular you were wondering about? Yeah, I mean, most of the rest were out. Probably. Yeah, Keith Washington will play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Keith Washington will play. Uh, Chandler's out. Sean Ryan's out. Uh, Qualls, that's the only one that really can probably update. So do you, I mean, how little was Charlie when you were recruiting his pro? Do you? Did you go into the home? Do you remember him as a kid? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember him when he when we recruited Michael for sure. Uh, he came to camp. He was probably let's do the math here. So we recruited him in 2010. Um, so that's nine years ago. So he was uh, he came to our camp several times. He and Dave, was, him and Jared are the same age. So we had both the brothers. What impressed you most about what Baber did at Oklahoma State? When they got down, and then they completely turned it. So they went. I don't remember exactly what the score was, uh, but Oklahoma State, Baylor scores, Oklahoma, was, Oklahoma State scores to go up, and then Baylor finished the game strong. You know, so I, and I think that they matched scores a couple different times, but uh, coming from behind in that, that's a tough atmosphere. Fans are right on top of you, they're beating the paddle boards and all that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, uh, I thought they showed some some championship level grit right there. Maybe a, an example of the experience and growing up a little bit. I think, season. man, and, and, and again, I think Matt's done a tremendous job. He did the same thing at Temple, really turned that program around. They're playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of belief. Um, I, I give I give Brewer a lot of credit too, because I really think when I when I watch them, you know, in all three phases, you can see kind of his personality. You know, tough, and you, you see him, he gets. You know, not this much, not as much this year, but maybe a year ago, um, really got hit a bunch and bounced back up, and and I think you know, this is the competitiveness and the toughness. Um, that's their their whole team has that right now. Similarities, Michael and and Charlie. Oh, they look alike. <laughs> no, I mean, they, they, they look alike. Um, I spent a long time ago, man, trying to trying to jog my memory. I think both mobile. They both got really quick releases. They're uh, their throwing styles are very similar. Uh, they both have won a tremendous amount of games. Um, that's you know I never got chance. I never coached Charlie, so I can't. I can talk about Michael, but I had him when he was young. Had his first two years. They've been very disruptive tackles for loss. You know what? They've been ahead, so I think they they've gotten ahead in games. So I think that's been a part of it, where teams have had to throw. Um, so they've been able to get after the quarterback. Um, I think a lot of those, they do a really good job. They play really relentless up front. And what I mean by that is, um, I think Ruben Jones plays relentless up front for us. You know, he plays, he's a high motor guy. Um, I see across the board that with them is, because what happens is they play a lot in coverage. So they're, they have two, sometimes three safeties, a bunch in coverage. So the quarterback is, is having to hold on to the ball because he's trying to find an open spot. And those guys up front, even though they may only be rushing three, they're relentless with their effort, and they're able to get second, sometimes second, third effort, and get to the quarterback. You know, I looked at the catch that Sam made against Texas. Mm-hmm. I looked at the Bryce Wheaton catch against Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean Ryan's got the strongest hands in the world, looks like. And then uh, that, that catch that Ollie Jennings makes against OU. Yeah. Got, that's four guys that if you put them together and they get consistent, looks pretty good. Down the yeah, field. we got a lot of hope on offense. You know, and you know, people sometimes wonder, you know, why you come in here and you're in a good boot. We lost three games in a row, or you get a tail kick pretty good. I mean, offensively, I think the I think the future is really bright for us. You know, I think that if you look at, I think we've started as many as, as six. I'm not calling them. I'm not using the F word anymore. Okay, so we got a lot of people that are playing for the first time, but um, you know, there's I think there's a lot of hope. You know, I think Sam James, the guy I'm excited about. Didn't play very well against Oklahoma, but I'm excited about his future. Bryce Wheaton started coming along for him. Ollie Jennings is going to be a really good player. Winston Wright is going to be a really good player. 
you know, the, the freshman, or I use the word again, I got it. <laughs> but uh, not the F word some of y'all were thinking about. <laughs> but, uh, but it's, I think, you know, we've got a couple that we haven't played that they got some really good experience in Monday Night Football that, you know, defensively is where, you know, the next two recruiting classes are going to be critical because we're playing some older guys. Maybe it's the first time we're really playing meaningful football this year, but we've got some older guys. But I think there's a lot of hope. Right? And I realize we haven't played very well offensively. I'm not, I'm not blind to that. I get it. Um, but there's a lot of hope, especially on that side of the ball. Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Iowa State losing the same, same day, same mm-hmm. weekend. Can you use that at all? Uh, I really don't. You know, I, I don't. I just kind of here, – here's where I'm at with our football team is I just want to get better, period. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spending a, a, a large amount of time um, on what Baylor's doing, offensive, defensive, and special teams, not because I don't respect them, I do. Um, I'm not spending any time whatsoever looking at other teams in the league because for I think for our football team is we just got to get better. You know, and I really felt like – that we were making strides, all right, up through the first half of the OU game where we were getting better. And some of it was hidden because Austin got didn't play against Iowa State, but we really made some strides in that game that just you couldn't necessarily show in the in the production. But I thought as a football team, really since we left halftime at Missouri all the way to halftime of OU, we were making positive strides. All right. The second half was was bad football. All right. Um, so really all we concentrate on since we went back to work last week is let's get better. Let's get better. And, and so that's kind of where my, my total focus is right now. Kind of yeah, along those um, same lines, do you feel like you guys got better last week, having a little bit of extra time to kind of focus yeah. on yourself? That's the hope. That's the hope. We'll see. We'll see how we play on Thursday night. But uh, we got it. We got some, some quality work. We, we probably uh, did more good on good work than we did during the first time. Um, just because we're thin, so our scout teams aren't as good as maybe we would like them to be, just from a talent perspective. Um, so we did more good on good work. We got a lot of work with the guys that are playing fewer snaps and the guys that are redshirted. Um, I thought some guys, you know, are, are making significant increases there. Um, but I think we did. But we got we got to see it on Thursday night, Mike. So. Um, the F work again. Yeah. Uh, no trap here. Go. Um, is that? Based on the observation, there's maybe a lot of guys like, well, we got a lot of time. I think it's a built-in excuse. Yeah. I think it's a built-in excuse, and uh, I think it's a built-in excuse for for our uh, maybe our those kids. I think it's a built-in excuse for our staff. I think it's a built-in excuse maybe for uh, myself. And, and listen, we're we're no excuse operation. It is what it is. We play a lot of young people, but here's the deal: we played seven games now, and we're not using that word anymore. All right. They've got, they've got seven games worth of experience. Some of them got five, some of them got six, but they've all played five plus four games, these guys that we're really dependent on. And uh, it's time. Well, uh, yes, sir. Um, hey, uh, Richard, or excuse me, at work you haven't played yet, is Mathis. Mm-hmm. And I think that might be a guy who can help us with your numbers and right back to anywhere near. Yeah, so I think he, he, he's, if I had to pick one guy that really stood out last week, it was him. Um, he had, he missed, he's a little bit behind. He had, he had a little knee um, injury that he was out for three weeks. Um, so he's coming back. Uh, last, uh, let's see, the OU week was his first week practicing full speed. And so last week he, he was back in Monday Night Football for the first time in probably, you know, four or five weeks. Um, and I thought he really, he did a nice job. You will see him as, as we go. Will it be Thursday night? I'm not sure yet. Uh, he'll travel. He'll make the trip. Whether he'll play or not, to be determined. But he will. He will play and get some carries at some point this year. Bandit position with, with uh, balls out, with coming mm-hmm. out. What do you? Yeah. So we'll be a little bit piecemeal there. You know, I think that uh, uh, Jared Bartlett will play in this game. You know, he'll make the trip, and this will be his first significant action. He'll play. Um, you know, we have some flexibility there with Abbott, Campbell, and Tonkery. Uh, they have the ability to kind of play Mike or Bandits will have there. And then Sandwich, Sandwich played some, some snaps against Oklahoma, and he'll be able to give us some in this game as well. Uh, looking at your tight ends, it seems like, you know, obviously a lot of them are getting more, more mm-hmm. run now and because, I guess, the blocking and it's short pass game. Not much Giovanni, is it? He's been, he's been a little banged up. Yeah. Yeah, he's had, he's had an injury that doesn't allow him to run full speed. So he's played some and some run and some pass protection stuff. We haven't, you know, I think today we'll test him a little bit more, and, but that's that's kind of that's 
the main reason behind that. When he's healthy, can he stretch the field on the seams? You know, I think that um, he and O'Loughlin both have the ability to do that. Um, you know, they are, uh, they both have really good hands. You know, Mike is a guy that was extremely productive. You know, he's still growing into his body. Y'all heard me talk about it. He's gained 50 some pounds since yeah. since he was a senior in high school. Um, but I think his junior senior year combined, y'all can check this. I think he had 100 plus receptions. You know, and he's got really good hands. He understands how to get open. Uh, he's got to understand some some of the technicalities at this level of being able to separate and being able to use your size to your advantage. Um, I like for both of them to play bigger. You know, um, I think sometimes they both play like. They used to be, you know, maybe they still see themselves as 195, 200 pound guys, mm -hmm. um, and now they're 250 pound guys. I like them. I like for them to play big, but they both definitely have skills in the receiving. Uh, we've used them more and more. Um, I think potentially they could be they could be threats in this game. With three losses in a row, how how do you fight again? How important is getting a win? So yeah, it's all yeah, it's always always important. That's that's the that's the that's the goal to go win. Um, Again, man, we, we really have, and the kids know, but I haven't set up and said, hey, we've got to, we got to stop this streak or anything like that. Um, obviously, they've lived it, so they know that we're on the, the, the streak of opposite, the opposite kind you want to be on. But we've got a break. I think there's kind of renewed focus, renewed energy. Um, you know, but we've got a huge challenge playing a team that's undefeated, that's number 12 team in the country, and playing with probably as much as confidence as anybody right now. Do you have any rules? Post-win versus post-loss, just mm -hmm. how locker room looks or does it police nah, itself? I think that people want consistency. And so we're pretty consistent in our approach. You know, it's, uh, you know, how our guys are evaluated is, it's really, it's been the way the whole time. Um, and I went in detail explaining how they were going to be evaluated after the debacle at Missouri. and. That's basically what we're evaluating on them on, on their effort or how they strain, their physicality, and how and if they're doing what their coach should do when it's been well defined. And if it hasn't been well defined, it's on us. But those are the three things that we're evaluating them on. And whether we beat NC State, we come in here, they're going to be evaluated on those things. Whether we um, lose when we had a chance to beat Texas, we're going to be defined on those three things. We lay an egg in the second half against OU, we're going to be defined on those three things. And I think um, I think leadership needs to be consistent. They need to know what to expect. I, mean, I don't think you can be too high and too low. Um, so that's that's kind of how I approach this with them. This Reese's best stretch that you've seen play, or do you have one season to look back at all? Yeah, you know, this is he, he is playing. Um, and I think it's a credit. It, and I'll say this, and I'm going to go off the, the question you asked for in a second. But if you see a couple of seniors, like I think, you know, we don't talk about them enough as far as like Colton McKibbins, Josh Norwood. Uh, Reese Donahue, like Keen Bailey, Keith Washington, those guys at the end of their careers, man, are really are really playing their best football. Um, and I do think it is. You know, I've watched Reese uh, last year. Obviously watched him all through this year. I, he's he's playing the best stretch of his career right now, without a doubt. Is it just that what they can hit I don't want to say it was a knockout, but he just kinda of did his job and he never had mm -hmm. a big side for TFL numbers and all of a sudden He's, He's, well, you know what? So the the schematics are different. Yeah. You know, last year, and this isn't right or wrong. Just speaking of what it is, really gap holders. 